I feel like we've been here before. Maybe I'm imagining things, but I'm getting the vibe that this is 2017, 18 and 19 for Tesla all over again. During that period of time, it's almost like the company, the market, commentators were all in a period of waiting, waiting for Tesla to go bankrupt, waiting for the competition to come, not all over themselves, but for Tesla and dominate, wait till the big boys come. And then suddenly out of nowhere, after a period of stagnation and bearishness for a number of years, investors realized that Tesla had a dominant lead that they were going to print and were printing insane amounts of money and looked like they'd secured the next decade or more in terms of electric vehicle dominance. Suddenly out of nowhere, Tesla stock absolutely surges, does a 10, 15 X in the span of almost no time, stuns most of the world and becomes the hottest topic on Wall Street. And then a couple of years later, we seem to find ourselves in the exact same situation once again. They say history never repeats, but it sure does rhyme. Unlike 2017, 18, and particularly in 19, when people thought Tesla was going bankrupt and the competition was coming, and then were proven wrong. This time around, I think people are sort of waiting, well, robotaxis will never happen, or look, well, autonomy's already been solved by other companies like Cruise and Waymo, therefore Tesla has no meaningful lead. And I almost feel like, get the sense that investors are just waiting. The sentiment's quite negative and bearish. Analysts are downgrading price targets, recommending investors sell, not recommending investors buy. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Now, I can understand this from an analyst's point of view. These guys and girls are judged over a 12-month period at most. There's no incentive for long-term thinking and recognizing long-term value. If you're in the media saying, well, I think autonomy is going to print trillions of dollars. It's going to take a few years to scale, though. Media doesn't care. It's past 12 months. Your colleagues don't care. It's past 12 months. This misalignment of incentives and time horizons can create enormous missed opportunities. So call me crazy, but I think history is certainly rhyming today. Analysts and investors just seem to be waiting and waiting and waiting, almost like Tesla's in a holding period, all due to the short-term focus and short-term nature of analysts and the finance media. Tell us about the next 12 months, but no further than that. We don't care about what's beyond 12 months, especially if there's 10 trillion plus dollars of opportunity there. We don't care about that. What about the next 12 months? Case in point. Tesla and most other EVs are purchased with financing, and lower rates would help make those vehicles more affordable. But our next guest says the company should brace for a potential massive headwind, which is another Trump presidency, possibly. So this is kind of funny. We'll talk about this in a bit more detail. Would a Trump presidency potentially be negative for Tesla? Here's a better question. What would the implications of a Trump presidency be for Tesla? That's a much better question. Here are the implications. Over the short term, if they get rid of the unnecessary EV tax incentives, again, they're commercially inevitable, prices keep coming down, you do not need to give customers what is in essence a massive discount on incredibly compelling technology that's getting cheaper and more compelling over time. Adoption is going to happen regardless. This wasn't the case 10 years ago, but now it is. So let's ask the question, if this incentive actually does go away, what would the consequences be? Not just for Tesla, but more broadly, let's see here. Uh, how many companies in the United States today are actually making money selling electric vehicles to consumers? I'm just going to count. Let me think here. Um, oh, we only needed a thumb. One. Tesla. That's it. Literally one company in the United States making money selling electric vehicles. Tesla. Everyone else is not losing $3, $500, or even $5,000, but many tens of thousands of dollars per vehicle sold. So in a situation in which a $7,500 tax credit disappears for consumers purchasing an electric vehicle in the United States... What are the consequences more broadly? Let's see here. Uh, companies who today are losing tens of thousands of dollars per electric vehicle sold are going to go bankrupt even sooner. Meaning the companies nipping away at Tesla's heels, trying to steal a little bit of market share due to brand loyal customers. Oh, I'm never going to buy a Ford. Oh, that Ford EV looks good. Oh, shit, they went bankrupt. Well, I can't buy one now. They're going to have no choice but to buy a Tesla. And this level of nuance is very important when talking about a potential Trump administration. On the face, they go, oh, EV tax credit. If that goes away, that's bad for Tesla. You see, Tesla doesn't exist in a vacuum, as I've said trillions of times. It's actually really important to understand the broader implications. The best possible thing that could happen to Tesla is the EV tax credit going away. Over the short term, yeah, it might hit margins a little bit. They might need to push prices down a little bit further to keep selling through volume due to the very, very difficult economic conditions with sky high interest rates, issues with the economy. Okay, we get that. But when the dust settles, what do you think companies like Ford and GM are going to do? If that $7,500 tax credit goes away, look, well, fuck it, let's just stop selling these EVs. It's going to make us go bankrupt even sooner if we keep producing them. So let's wind back our goals. If the government's not going to help us out, I mean, hello. But again, this requires long-term thinking. If you've got a 12-month mindset, and again, I'm not roasting Colin here for, he's, he's right about the short term. If he's, I know exactly what he's going to say. He's going to talk about Tesla gross automotive margins 
around a $7,500 tax credit being removed. But you've got to look at the big picture. When the dust settles, if Tesla's the only company in the United States left standing, so to speak, that is a massive win. And personally, I don't think there should be an EV tax incentive at all. It's not necessary. It's a waste of money. However, on the flip side, there are also obnoxiously large tariffs being proposed and already implemented on imported electric vehicles, especially from China, which gives Tesla a further unfair advantage. I was previously of the belief that imported Chinese electric vehicles would eat the lunch of the likes of Ford and General Motors and so on. Not going to be as good as the Tesla, but they'll be pretty affordable and relatively compelling. Good product, right? They're like the Android to the iPhone in terms of electric vehicles, Tesla being the iPhone in this example. But if it's financially impossible for Chinese EV manufacturers to sell electric vehicles for reasonable prices in the United States due to insane tariffs, and we're talking like 100 plus percent, and the local companies, Ford, General Motors and so on, simply can't sustainably keep selling vehicles at multi $10,000 losses. They go away as well. This is the best thing that could happen for Tesla. But you have to think long term. Actually, you just have to think, period. So anyway, back to Colin after that rant. I just thought I'd share my initial thoughts and kind of jump the gun. I think what he's going to talk about is Tesla gross automotive margins over the next 12 months. Let's see. As the former president has implied, he could end the EV tax credits under the Inflation Reduction Act. Tesla has been the biggest beneficiary so far in terms of EV tax credits now. So joining us... And let's be clear, the reason is because they've sold the most electric vehicles, right? Obvious things are obvious. They haven't got more incentives than other companies. It's not like there's been an unfair deal made. It's just if you're selling the most electric vehicles, then it's inevitable that you're going to have the most EV tax credit benefit in dollar amount because math. For more is Colin Langan, the automotive and mobility analyst over at Wells Fargo. Colin, take us through why this is such an issue, because frankly, Tesla shares have had a nice, decent bounce off some of the lows that we saw earlier this summer. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a misperception since Elon has been supportive of Trump that this, you know, somehow a Trump presidency would be good for Tesla. So I don't actually know who's been saying this beside me. And I've been saying it repeatedly, but I mean, if anyone knows of any instances of other people suggesting a Trump presidency would actually be good for Tesla, please let me know. I've been saying it relentlessly, but I have not heard a single other person make this point. By the way, it would, as I've explained a million times. Again, you've got to think and not just think about a tiny, narrow slice. Think broad, big picture, okay? Trump and Musk have a very good working relationship. Trump respects Elon Musk. He's already flagged the idea of Musk being involved in a government efficiency commission. Musk wants jobs in America. Trump wants jobs in America. Musk loves manufacturing. Trump loves manufacturing. Tesla needs to scale another 10 times or more over the next decade. They need to begin massive refinement of lithium and production, everything. Mining refinement in the United States, building out supply chain, in the United States. So you've got a potential president here who understands the economy, wants jobs, wants manufacturing, will cut regulation, wants a booming economy. And then you've got Musk here, ultimately driving trillions of dollars of economic activity and value in the United States over the next decade. I mean, how fucking low? This is the best possible thing that could happen. They're going to talk. Musk going to be like, bro, we want to refine lithium here. It's taken too fucking long to get shit approved. Can you help out? Trump goes, yes. It boggles the mind that people aren't really putting the pieces of the puzzle here together. Okay. The alternative, of course, under comrade Kamala, whose campaign a couple of days ago sent out an extremely hostile, aggressive, rude, obnoxious and derogatory email slinging mud at Elon Musk. The entire Democratic Party right now seems to have been weaponized against Elon because Elon bad. They're actively hostile toward Musk and Tesla. How on earth can people not understand this? Let me guess. Colin's going to say Trump loves fossil fuels and talks shit about EVs. Therefore, it must be bad for Tesla. You've got to think bigger than that, bro. Please. If you really step back, you know, we estimated in our report today that there's about, you know, 12 billion dollars of IRA funding that's been given to, to the market and about, you know, close. Again, the market does not need the funding. As a Tesla investor, hey, if the government wants to waste taxpayer money and throw a little bit Tesla's way for infrastructure, but whatever, I'll take it. But it's unnecessary. And it's not going to move the needle either way. This is going to keep doing what they've been doing, keep winning, irrespective of how much government interference there is or is not. Just to, you know, seven of that has been Tesla related between their, their buyers who get up to 7,500 credits when they buy a vehicle, as well as production tax credits, which could be well over $3,000. And again, this is simply a result of Tesla's scale. Tesla would have been fine without any of these incentives, but they were there. They'd be crazy not to take them. The way Colin seems to be framing this is almost as if Tesla's dependent on this government intervention, free money. They're not. They'll take it. I mean, you'd have to be insane not to. Remember, 
They're an extremely profitable, dominant company as it is. Still making money despite the fact that it's an absolute shitstorm economically. Interest rates are through the roof. People can't borrow. They're feeling the pinch. The cost of living has gone up enormously. Yet they're still making a packet of money. And globally, roughly 2 million vehicles per year. They've only got a 5X to be the same size as the world's largest ever automotive manufacturers by units sold. I do just want to remind everybody that Tesla's pile of cash and equivalents is in excess of $30 billion as I record this. In other words, they're going to be just fine, regardless of whether or not there are incentives for consumers purchasing electric vehicles, subsidies, help from government in terms of building out infrastructure or not. Per vehicle. So we're talking about $10,000 per car in the U.S. If that gets removed, it's quite a material headwind for Tesla. And that's really the, the key point in our note today. Okay, so if that is the case, there is a reason why you have a sell rating on that stock and 120 Wow, I didn't realize he had a sell rating on Tesla stock as well. Boy, I can't wait to revisit that in a couple of years. Now, look, again, I don't want to be unfair on Colin. It's actually illegal for him to have any thoughts about anything beyond 12 months into the future regarding Tesla or any companies he covers. Therefore, valid comments, right? I mean, in theory, tax credit would go away. Headwind for Tesla in terms of short-term profitability on their automotive business. Can someone remind me, by the way, is there a tax credit and incentive for their battery business, which is booming and printing huge... Oh, wait, no, there's not. Okay, interesting. And is the government subsidizing Tesla's progress on autonomy? No. Okay, interesting. Any government handouts for the Optimus Humanoid Robot? No. Hmm. But, of course, those are beyond 12 months, potentially, so got to ignore them, right? Bro, it's so wild to me hearing a guy in the media recommending investors sell Tesla stock. It's August 2024. Just wanted to put that timestamp there for everybody watching. Now, what do we have on screen now? Construction progress update on the huge fans Tesla installing at Giga Texas for the company's new GPU data center cooling system. So this is my point. You have Colin here, August 2024, sell Tesla stock. EV tax credit potentially going away under a potential Trump administration. Therefore, don't buy the stock, sell the stock. Meanwhile, you have, look at this, bro. This is absolutely fucking ridiculous, man. Mass, I mean, seriously, the scale of this, and you think, oh, geez, why the fuck would they need something so big with all these fans here for ventilation? What's that? It's for their new GPU cluster for AI training. Can you not? But again, Colin's looking at this going, oh, well, 12 months time. Will this make a difference? Oh, probably not. <laughs> it's health as well. Jesus Christ, dude. And this post from Alex mirrors my own thoughts. Photograph of this absolutely fuck off massive cooling infrastructure with the caption, just a car company with a gigantic water cooling infrastructure for a little thing called Cortex and <laughs> probably nothing. Yeah, it's definitely nothing. Please ignore it, especially if you're an analyst. The more people who are selling Tesla stock, the cheaper I'm buying. $20 price target. It's largely been tough to be a bear on... Wait, uh, how much? There is a reason why you have a sell rating on that stock and a $120 price target. $120? Holy fuck, dude. Dude, I'm lost for words. Doesn't happen often. That it's largely been tough to be a bear on Tesla, even with some of the big drawdowns that we've seen. How exactly does this then play out? It's not a straight line, but why exactly is the fair value that you've assessed down where you have it right now? Hey, yo, I've got to take a moment here. Credit where it's due to the anchor here on CNBS. He just used the term fair value when describing the price target, which is exactly the point. Just to be clear, despite the common misconceptions, a price target isn't a prediction of what a stock's going to be worth. It's an estimate of its fair value. Very different things. In fact, this is how investors seek returns or lose money. If you can identify that the market is paying well under what you personally believe fair value for a company will be in the future, and you're buying it, you're buying at a discount. If you're right, you'll be very happy. On the flip side, if you have a not comparable IQ to Trevor Meltdown Milton of Nikola and you think they're the next Tesla and you buy near the top and then later discover that there was a mismatch between what investors were paying and the actual underlying value of that abomination of a company, you may in fact have fucked around and found out losing 95 plus percent of your money. So it is very important, okay? There can be a massive disconnect between what a company really intrinsically is worth and what investors are paying. This is why you've heard the expression, over the short term, the market is a voting machine. That's all around sentiment, opinions, emotions, not substance. Over the long term, the market is a weighing machine. With all of that said, I think Colin's scales are broken as fuck, bro. 
Yeah, I mean, Tesla never really ever moves in a straight line. I think when we look at it, you know, there's probably going to be some bumps over the next month. I think particularly the robo taxi day, typically you get hype into that. But also what we find is that historically there's a lot of hype into those events and then the stock fades off after. The fundamental reality here is the auto business has been under pressure. If you look at the first half of the year, we have negative pricing and negative volumes. So you have a company that has negative elasticity at this point. So there is a, a big concern that I have about where volumes, where pricing is going and what that means for margins. And I think, you know, ultimately those fundamentals should should rule and the stock should be under pressure. And that's really the driver of our underweight rating. So, so I- well, he got there eventually. Gross automotive margins. Next 12 months, $120 price target, sell Tesla stock. Meanwhile, I guess we just ignore everything that's further out than 12 months, right? Add to this the competition. Can you just talk to where you think that's going to be in in a year or two with... I'm going to jump the gun here. I mean, Colin seems to be a reasonably bright guy, although because it's illegal for him to think more than 12 months into the future, he does say some dumb things. Don't blame the guy. It's against the law for him to think more than 12 months. So, hey, it ain't his fault. But I'm going to answer this question, and this will be a intelligence test for Colin if he answers comparably, okay? Tesla has no competition. 12 months from now, the so-called competition will still be losing tens of thousands of dollars per electric vehicle sold, slowing their production goals down, falling short of their previously stated goals, scaling back, losing even more money, also struggling to sell vehicles, discounting heavily to keep selling through volume and then going, yeah, fuck it, you know what, this electric vehicle thing is not for us. Let's go all in on hybrids for the next couple of years and trick dumb consumers with lots of advertising to buy our hybrids because they're the future even though they're not. And Chinese EV manufacturers are going to be facing stupidly high import tariffs. So they're not going to be competitive with Tesla either. Therefore, no competition. Tesla reigns supreme. End of story. Over to you, Colin. So many companies coming in with lower prices. And, I, and it, you know, yes, the Chinese will have tariffs on BYD. But compared to the rest, where do you see that landscape? Well, we're already seeing Tesla has been losing EV market share to improve competition from the traditional companies. You know, it said the traditional companies are struggling with profits as well and are report today does talk about, you know, a pocket here that, you know, Trump actually could be negative for the traditional players as well in the, in the midterm. There's an... True. Like I said, if EV tax credits go away, it ain't Tesla that's going to be negatively affected. Expectation that if he comes in, we're going to reduce the fuel economy targets, but that probably is a 2028 type event. It took about three years last time for him to reverse fuel economy standards. And so if he wins this time, I think there's a bullishness that he might do that. But there's also this concern that we highlight in the report today is that the IRA credits, which are, you know, for many vehicles, $10,000 a car between the production tax credit and the, the consumer credit, you know, those could go away faster. So there could be between 26, 27, you know, a period where automakers have no support and yet they have, you know, tough standards. So we're going to see better models, more competition. Um, but, you know, I think for the whole industry and we're underweight all the Detroit three, you know, there's a lot of challenges, electric vehicles being one of the biggest. All right. Tesla shares down about 12 percent year to date with a 78 forward multiple. Colin Langan, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Do you guys think Colin will still be covering Tesla once autonomy has widely scaled? Because I'm very curious to hear what he'll be saying if he's still covering the company then. As I mentioned, I mean, they'll throw him in prison if he talks about more than 12 months in the future. So I totally get it. No autonomy discussion. But just to be clear, what we heard, absolutely, entirely, wholly focused on Tesla's automotive business, automotive margins, and the next 12 months. There is a reason, a very strong reason, why I model Tesla out over the next decade and then some. There's about 23 people watching this video who don't know that I have a Tesla valuation model. It's been published on Patreon. I update it pretty regularly. By the way, if you want to see it, check out the link in the pinned comment to join Patreon at the investor level and above. When I first published this back in 2021, it spanned 10 years. There's a reason for that because I'm looking 10 plus years into the future. I want to remind you folks, when I started buying Tesla stock, what was happening prior to then and when I started this YouTube channel, just to make a point, side of the YouTube channel here on screen now, 22 bucks a share, Tesla stock now 220. Look at that. Perfect, neat number. It's up about a 10x, right? Now what occurred here is Tesla started printing money, which was inevitable and predictable as they scaled Model 3 production. Right. The question was, would Tesla be able to scale Model 3 production? If so, they're going to print money. But investors were skeptical. The competition's coming. They won't be successful. They're going to go bankrupt. And so on. then suddenly they print money. Stock moons. Still up 10x since then. I've made this example before, but it's worth repeating. Remember I talked earlier about the stock market being a voting machine over the short term? In the five-year period, more than five years actually, from the 7th of March 2014 until the 31st of May 2019, Tesla stock, if you had purchased on the 7th of May 2014 and held till the end of May 2019, you would have been down 24, 25% on your position. During that period of time, Tesla has gone from ramping Model S, which then goes on to win every award ever, 
to massively driving costs down, to unveiling the Model 3, to ramping the Model 3, and successfully scaling production. Yet, the stock went less than nowhere. This is a perfect example of a voting machine for more than five years, where a sentiment was the competition's coming, they're going bankrupt, blah, blah, blah. Then suddenly, somebody whips out the scales and goes, oh, fuck, they're going to print money. They are printing money. Holy shit, Tesla goes to the moon. Right now, the voting seems to be focused around short-term gross automotive margins, completely, completely ignoring autonomy, just like everyone was ignoring Tesla's inevitable profitability. And then suddenly, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Split adjusted in May 2019. You can get Tesla for like 12 bucks a share. By the way, I bought some around then. A year later, up 350%. Two years later, up nearly 1,500%. Remember that example I gave earlier? Five years, Tesla goes nowhere. Well, on screen now, beginning of 2021 until present day, three and a half years, Tesla down 25%. One final question. Let's just say hypothetically, orange man bad becomes the president of the United States and is successful in reinvigorating the US economy, in bringing down inflation, real wages increasing, high employment, interest rates coming down, cost of goods and services coming down. Just hypothetically, could we see what's happened to the automotive market, which has been quite bearish over the last year, year and a half, start to reverse? In which case, this entire discussion around short-term automotive margins becomes a thing of the past. And the answer to that question is, <laughs> who gives a shit, bro? Autonomy is just around the corner. Wake up. Want more content? Early access? bunch of perks click the links in the pinned comment ag1 is awesome i've been taking it daily now for more than three years it's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps it's packed full of vitamins minerals and whole food source nutrients plus has prebiotics probiotics and adaptogens to improve gut health regularity and help your body handle stress i'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best which is why i haven't missed a day of ag1 for more than three years and i haven't missed a daily video in more than three years must be a coincidence right just try it and see how you feel Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. But don't take my word for it. This is what viewers of the channel had to say after trying AG1. I feel like I have a lot more energy since I started on AG1. By the way, viewer, that makes two of us. On to the next. Just got my AG1 in the mail. Legit feeling the effects after day three. This viewer's been taking AG1 for eight months and says, what an investment. Another. Three months ago, I started AG1 and have been enjoying the evenness of alertness and energy that lasts the day. I just started the wife on it too. Are you convinced yet? I mean, hey, it's worth trying, right? Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or I can keep going. There's plenty more to come. This viewer, after about a month on AG1, definitely a lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Pleasant side effect is that my coffee intake has imploded and is almost down to zero. One more. Yeah, why not? I honestly feel younger and will be continuing to use AG1. This stuff really is crazy good. I didn't think it would be, but this stuff is awesome. It really is what everyone is saying. One more, don't mind if I do. I've just received my third month supply. I've drank it every day. I have so much energy throughout most of the day. I'm productive, started a new business, started socializing, refurbished a boat. It's no coincidence. Thank you for your persistence, your integrity, and your insights. Now look, these are not my words. These are not my testimonials. This is what you guys and girls are saying. Maybe it's 100% placebo effect. But even if that's the case, I think it's money well spent. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs. If you're still skeptical, hey, I don't blame you. Everyone on the planet seems to be promoting AG1 now, but guess what? They weren't nearly three years ago when I had this to say privately to my Patreon audience before there was a relationship when I was asked about what I was doing for my health, energy, and so on. Just sharing my genuine, honest thoughts about a product I'd recently discovered that was at the time called Athletic Greens, now AG1. If I could only recommend one supplement to take, Athletic Greens, and I'm not getting paid to say this, Athletic Greens is a fucking game changer. I just, I cannot believe how effective this is. No longer having a lack of energy in the afternoons. It's fucking amazing. There's only one thing to recommend, seriously, try Athletic Greens, you won't go back. So obviously, just like Elon Musk is a liar, a fraud, a con man, a scammer, a fake engineer, and Tesla's going bankrupt, you shouldn't trust that guy from about three years ago who, without any financial incentive, was promoting this product to his audience on Patreon when they were asking about health and what he's doing for supplements. Because obviously, there was some other reason he recommended that, obviously. I'm not sure what it was, but don't trust that guy. And all the testimonials, like my mental game has improved with AG1. I feel better than ever. I'm so impressed I've bought it for both my parents. I feel more focused and have better digestion. Incredible difference. No more afternoon fatigue. It's relieved gut issues. These are all just obviously fake testimonials from fake people. Right? Wrong. Just try it. 
unless you hate yourself. If you hate yourself and you don't even want to risk possibly feeling better, this is not for you. But for everyone else, what's the worst that could happen? Try it for a month. See how you feel. It's a no-brainer. Just click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR. You'll get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 and K2 plus five travel packs. And you'll take the colossal risk that maybe you might have a similar experience to some of the people whose testimonials we've read in this video.